Good morning. Grace and peace in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we gather. I'm Reverend Barbara Weekle, and we are the people of Memorial United Methodist Church in West Carrollton, Ohio. Thank you for joining us to worship today. <clears throat> now let us prepare our hearts and minds to praise God, to receive good news, and to be commissioned as servants of Jesus in the world. tablet, first to eat a Popeye's new chicken sandwich, first ones in class, first to be promoted, and first to be chosen for the team. It's good to be first. It's good to be rich. Rich people get what they want, not just what they need. Rich people have servants or employees to do what they don't want to do for themselves. Rich people go places others cannot. Rich people impress others just because of their wealth. It's good to be rich. Until it comes to the following Jesus, being rich might be enough to keep us from eternal life. Being first might result in our being last. All the things we value might become stumbling blocks to the true life and God's love. Jesus looks carefully at us and loves us. He offers the, us the opportunity to truly live. Will we do what he asks or turn away, Saturn? Please join us in singing verses 1, 3, and 5 of Jesus Calls Us found at number 398 in the United Methodist Hymnal. <clears throat> we fall to offer to one another. Help us, we pray, to hear your word that challenges our false understandings and gives us hope for forgiveness that we might represent and place our trust in you and live in the light of our eternal grace 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the gospel from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 31. I will be reading from the Common English Bible. Now, as Jesus continued down the road, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? And Jesus replied, Well, why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. Now you know the commandments. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false testimony. Don't cheat. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he responded, I've kept all of these things since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, well, you are lacking one thing. Go and sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at this statement and went away saddened because he had many possessions. And looking around, Jesus said to his disciples, It will be very hard for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom. His words startled the disciples, so Jesus told them again, Children, it's difficult to enter God's kingdom. It's easier for a camel to squeeze through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. They were shocked even more and said to each other, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them carefully and said, It's impossible with human beings, but not with God. All things are possible for God. And then Peter said to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Well, I assure you that anyone who has left house, brothers, sisters, mother, father, children, or farms because of me and because of the good news will receive 100 times as much now in this life, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and farms, with harassment, and in the coming age, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy one who looks at us carefully and loves us, Open our hearts and minds to hear your word for us today. Bless us with new understanding and deeper commitment that we may live in your realm in this life and in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You can't get to heaven on roller skates. You'll roll right by those pearly gates. You can't get to heaven in a rocking chair. 
because a rocking chair won't get you there. You can't get to heaven in a limousine because the Lord don't sell no gasoline. You can't get to heaven in a motor car because a motor car won't go that far. You got to work your way to the pearly gates and you got to believe if you want to get in. My, oh my. People are still asking Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Now this question about eternal life often looms large when a loved one is dying or, or when we are facing our own death. We want to know if we're good to go. Now often at the top of our list is, he's a good person. Now, by that, we usually mean a follower of the rules, mostly. You know, no murder, adultery, stealing, lying, and generally honoring our family relationships. You know, it's interesting that Jesus omits no coveting from his list of the um, commandments, but he adds no cheating. I think that's another story for another day. But we describe the loved one as a good person. And then after we've established our goodness, we go on to list accomplishments, especially accomplishments that seem worthy of respect. She loved her family. He cared about animals and even volunteered at an animal shelter. Well, they donated a lot of money to worthy causes, which they could do because they worked hard and earned much. They were band parents even after they had no children in the band. That's one I'll never understand. <laughs> what Jesus omits, and what we often cannot say, is that the person loved God worshipped no idols, never took God's name in vain, as the King James Version said. In some cases, we are unaware of any statements of belief in God or any following of Jesus Christ, which creates great anxiety. For if, as the song says, we've got to work our way to the pearly gates, if we've got to believe there could be a problem obtaining eternal life. Did we do enough? Was our belief adequate? But that's not what Jesus says is the way to enter God's kingdom. Now, we, we don't know if the requirement to give away all that he had was for the benefit of the poor people or of the man. We can't be certain that the assets would bless the people who received them. A recent article says that we might be getting a big increase in Social Security this year for some of us, maybe as much as $100 a month. Yeah. You know, one of the questions posed to those who are ordained in the United Methodist Church is Are you going on to perfection? Now, the, the perfection we are speaking is that of perfect love, not a perfect life. And they give us the appropriate response to the question. <laughs> we aren't allowed to make up our own. <laughs> and it says, with God's help, I am. To be perfected in love requires love. The love with which Jesus looks upon the man the love with Jesus wish, looks upon all of us. The commands of Jesus are not punishment, but invitations. Invitations to a way, new way of living in love with God and one another. Jesus looks at us carefully, loving us, eager for us, to accept the invitation he offers. 
the man left saddened, leaving behind Jesus, who was also saddened by the man's departure. We don't know what happened to the man after this event, but I can imagine that he rehearsed Jesus' words in his mind, that he remembered Jesus looking at him with love, affirming that his desire to obtain eternal life was possible. Possible not through obeying the laws, not on roller skates, and not in a rocking chair, not even by limousine or motor car, not even by our own work. You know, at least once each week we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer, honestly spoken and willingly accepted, is our acceptance of God's invitation to live in the kingdom, not in the life after life, but in the present time all the time, living in love with God and one another, caring for creation's gifts, living generous lives of appreciation and dignity. Jesus looks carefully at us, loving us, and that makes all the difference in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand in body and spirit as we are firm our faith using the historic words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Well, as usual, we are grateful for all those who make our worship happen, including worship leader Brianna Bigness, our musicians, ushers, and greeters. And we're especially thankful today for Aiden and Braden. Aiden and Braden, who are the tech team in the in Kathy and Chad's absence. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> well done, gentlemen. Yes? Oh, did I skip that? I'm sorry. All right, let's stop. We'll, we'll let them sing, and then we'll go back to what we were doing. <laughs> hold, your, hold that thought. <laughs> I'm sorry. Apologies, it was in my script. I just ignored it. But aren't you glad they caught my attention and said, we want to sing. Thank you so much. Well, it's candy making time. And tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m., we will gather to fold boxes in anticipation of the yummy caramels that will soon fill them. Um, that's at 6, right, Don? 6 or if you can't come at 6, come when you can. Okay, 6 or, or later. Um, so, by the way, sales are going well, so make sure you get your order in. You don't want to be left out. Um, and then please note all the other activities scheduled for the week, including UMW tomorrow at noon, right? Okay. Um, and now some of the COVID news is positive, and many are, but many are still continuing to battle its effects, particularly our healthcare professionals. So thank you for doing all that is possible to protect one another from this disease. And let's continue to pray for an end to its vicious grip upon our world. Now Rosetta has asked to make an announcement. Pastor Barbara, would you please come and stand in the center here? 
Uh, as you may know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we've chosen this Sunday to honor our pastor. Uh, because of her leadership, great things are happening here at Memorial, and we are just so happy to have her as she shares her leadership, her compassion, her love, and we just love her. So let us give her a hand. <laughs> Pastor Barbara, the flowers on the altar are for you. And we also have this card. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me say it is a privilege to be a part of this vital and vibrant and loving community. Thank you. Let us now prepare ourselves for communal prayer. said, loving God, we offer the prayers of our hearts and our voices to you, knowing that you are always ready to hear your people, assured that you are already at work in the situations we name. We seek your presence among those who are ill, injured, or suffering from chronic conditions. We pray for healing, compassion, and grace to surround them. We pray for any who are awaiting diagnoses or treatments, and for those who are moving from life to life. We pray for all who are grieving and anxious, that they may be comforted. And we name these ones before you, with our hearts and our voices. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are in danger or facing troubling times, for those whose lives are disrupted by storms, floods, fires, and other acts of nature. For any who are not safe in their homes, communities, or countries. For those who are addicted to dangerous substances or behaviors, and for all who are affected by their addiction. For those who are imprisoned behind bars and those who are imprisoned by other circumstances or choices. And for those who have limited access to safe food, water, and shelter, to education or training and health care. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for creation and for all human institutions that people the earth. For the protection and responsible use of creation's resources that supply our needs. For governments, corporations, and agencies to act responsibly in caring for our common good, for kindness and generosity to, to flourish 
and defeats greed and self-satisfaction. And for the well-being of our children, elders, and all who need assistance with daily needs. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the followers of Jesus Christ, those who receive his love and follow his path. We pray for Bishop Palmer and Superintendent Roper and all who lead your people. We pray for faithful disciples who serve their neighbors with love and compassion. We pray for all whose prayers uphold our communities and for those whose offerings provide the resources we need. We pray for bold leaders who will speak truth to power and for those who might hear them and respond with grace. We pray for the people, mission, and ministry of this congregation and for the communities in which we live and serve. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray in the communion of the saints using the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is what I have answered when you called. You will find it in the bulletin or on the screens.
Go now as ones who follow the Lord Jesus in this world and who make God's world visible in acts of love. Be blessed to be a blessing now and always. Amen.